So customizing Angular Material 3 components has just got a lot easier or it's about to become a lot easier with the new Angular version 18 due to be released sometime this month. And as you can see, you can actually pre create pretty cool stuff like this custom button styler that I created recently to showcase or test this out. And you can see that I have four identical components here. Each have some sliders and uh, then they have also a button which we are actually changing. And then you can change the roundness, you can change the height and you can change the text size according to your needs, even the colors of the button. All by using the powers of the CSS variables. And the cool thing about this is that you can actually scope these changes to specific components or at any level that you want. So for example, these are four components and the change that I make here to the component is not going to flow here. I can make another change here. I can change the color here. And you can see that the changes that I'm making are all scoped to this specific component, similar for other components here. So this is really cool because this allows us to customize the components at a really granular level according to our needs, according to sometimes client requirements, or even, you know, just for the requirements of the project that we want. So what has changed exactly? Let's go through this. Now, if you're a long term material user, you would know how difficult it is to actually change anything or customize uh, the appearance of your material components. So if, if we go in the Angular Material official documentation site and I switch over to version 11, which is pre MDC components one, you can see that we have a basic set of buttons. But what if we want to change the appearance of these buttons? Well, we could try out three different things. So the first thing we'd, we could try out would be to actually try out the theming APIs. Maybe the theming APIs of Angular Material provides such a facility or such a feature to change these appearance. Let's say we want to change the border radius of the components. Maybe we want to make it more squarish or we want to make it more rounded. So the first step would be maybe we want to use the theming APIs. But the problem is the theming APIs only provide us three properties that we can change. So one is the color. You can have the primary accent and bond color and you have to give a material palette to the colors so that we can use those colors. Then we have typography, which we can change the font. And then we have density. So that is how things are close and far apart in the components themselves. We don't have any specific setting to actually change the border radius or, you know, change some specific property of the button that we want. So then the second thing we could do would be to uh, maybe use a different component. And that's what I have done a lot of times in my project. So for example, if I need a smaller button, you know, some I, I have space for just a small button in my UI and I don't want to use this this big button. Maybe I would go to the chips section and I would look at the chips and I would take these chips components. But of course, the chips components are meant to be used in a specific context and they're not exactly like buttons. So maybe we don't want to use that. So then the third option, which is the last option that we a lot of people, a lot of material devs, they end up using till now has been to actually let's go back to the button to actually go deep into the CSS and you can inspect the CSS here. Like for example, this raised one, we want to change this and we can go in the internals of this and we can see that it has a box shadow. It has a margin. It has a background color and you can see it has a border radius here of four pixels. So basically we want to change this. So what we do here then is that we'll try changing this. Let's say we make it 16 pixels and yeah, I like this new rounded shape. Maybe we want to change it in this way. So we change it to 16 pixels that this works. That means we can target this selector here, the CSS selector, and then we can add this to our styles or SAS to make it uh, change globally. If you want to make it change locally, we'll have to sort of uh, use ng deep maybe to actually target these internal uh, CSS selectors. So again, not very ideal. And you'll see a lot of code bases. They have these changes. I myself have been using it because simply there was no other way. Now that's all in well, and it works as you can see. But what's the problem now? The problem here is that when the internals of the component changes, we would have to update our code as well. And that is exactly what happened when the Angular Material team changed to the Angular Material Design Components Refactor, internal refactor. So for example, if we go in the version of maybe 15, I guess. So Angular Material team introduced the MDC based components in Angular Material 15. And let's see in go in your components, the same thing button. Now you have the appearance is the same, you can see, but when you inspect it, you're going to see that the internals have changed. So you can see now the name of the CSS selector has changed. Matt MDC race button. Previously it was Matt race button. So you'll have to update all of your code within that and it's going to break all of the existing 
overrided styles that you have been doing and that is what happened personally with me as well in a very complex project i had uh, sort of over overrode different styles to make it uh, look the way that we wanted but with the mdc change in angular version 15 a lot of things broke the appearance went completely haywire and i had to spend a lot of time to actually fix all of the ui issues but thankfully with the material 3 changes all of that is behind us now so as you can see here with the mdc based changes you would notice that we have these variable references here and these are basically referring to css variables but what are these css variables basically so it was revealed these are basically material design tokens and if you go on the material design website the official material design website you can see there's a whole section on design tokens and they have explained what the purpose of a design token is so so the concept is basically of a common set of properties which has a key has a value and this can be referred to between the engineering and the design teams of any big project and basically the implementation of these tokens in different platforms varies but the tokens names and the values will remain the same so there will be a common set of styles that we can actually refer to by all teams now obviously it's a larger concept and this is obviously meant for larger teams but for our case for the angular material components these design tokens have been implemented as css variables so let's go back to our uh, material 3 demo here that we created and you can see that we have a button here so how do we find out which property we actually want to change so we are going to go in the developer tools as i showed before and you're going to inspect this button and when you look at this button you are going to see that almost all of the properties are now referring to a css variable so we are going to inspect that for example we want to change the border radius as we discussed before when we look at the border radius we are going to see that it refers to the variable mdc protected button container shape and you can see that the value for this has been defined in the html portion of the app that means it's the most top level and uh, it has a value of 999 pixels let's try and change this to see whether it changes the radius and you can see that yes the radius changes a bit and in fact the radius of all the buttons change so how do we make this custom bust, uh, custom button styler using this so all we need to do to change now the components at any level is to just set the value of the specific design token so here for example we are changing it in the html portion so this is basically going to be followed in all over the app so this is good for custom changes but if for example you want to restrict it to specific places even to a specific component itself so uh, let's look at the code a bit for this button styler and see how we can implement this so if for example we go in our code here you can see that our button config is here and let's just split this up so that we can actually see the material demo alongside this and you can see here that we have the slider the roundness slider the height slider it's a matte slider and the text size slider so there are three sliders and each of the sliders are basically linked to the signals which actually contain the value of the slider at any time so we have three signals here which we have declared we have given them some initial value and then all we have to do is that we want to associate this css variable that css variable for that property to this signal value and this is the button that is actually going to be changed so we can actually change the style for this button directly as well but let's first see how we can change the style for this whole component scope it within that component so for example we can go in our host binding here now the host binding here is going to provide us a, a good way to actually bind the signal to the css variable or the style binding so uh, let's add a style binding here now in our now in our uh, developer tools we saw that we wanted to override a specific css variable so what was that and let's copy that in then let's go to that here and we can see that we have we have this button let's see which one we want so we want to override this border radius and let's just copy this value here so this is basically the name of the css variable that we want to update and let's make this change here we are going to say style dot the css variable and this is going to be assigned to the roundness setting which is linked to the roundness value here so we are going to say let's say we can also do it like this roundness and we are also going to give it pixels here great so let's see if this works let's save this and now you can and now uh, we are going to try to change the roundness so when we reduce the roundness you can see that the roundness changes here we make it maximum it goes here 
So it's from 0 to 30 pixels. We keep this here and because it is scoped just to the component, we can see that this roundness remains at 19 and when we change this, this can be made to made 0 and it's going to only affect this button because this is contained within this component. The same thing with others. So nice and simple. Now if you wanted to make it global, we could actually give it in a styles file, the style.sas which is a global file or a level above this specific component. Similarly, we are going to do the same with the two or three variables that we have. The other variables that we have, so let's say we want to change the height of this. So let's see what the height is and you can see the height is here, MDC protected button container height. Click on this and we can actually copy this like this. Let's change this here. We need another key here. This is going to be styled and this, this is going to be height, the signal value, pixels and we are going to make it another like this. Okay, so this should work as well. Let's save this here and now we can test the height and you can see that yes, the height changes here. You can reduce the height here, you can change the height here. So pretty nice. And the last one is the text size. So let's change the text size here. The text size, we are going to look at the label itself and you can see the color and you can see the font size. So MDC protected button label text size. Now you can be rest assured that these styles are not going to change. These design token names are not going to change that frequently. Okay. So the Angular Material team has promised that these design token names are going to remain the same for the foreseeable future. And if they're going to be changed slightly in the future, there will be migrations provided so that it becomes easier for us to change it in our code bases. But again, it would be good if they provide a long list a comprehensive list of all of the design tokens available for each component so that we don't have to go in our uh, style inspectors to get these. But for now, this will have to do. So if you can go MDC protected label text size, I can copy this here and let's now close this once and for all. And we're going to put this here again. Let's say style dot and this is going to be text size. And for these, we are going to keep it as REM because that makes more sense. Okay. So now when we increase the text size, you can see the text size beautifully increases. This is a small button. Maybe you want a bigger button. So we have a bigger button here with a less roundness and we have all of our features that I just showed you initially. So of course, probably you're not going to be creating this button styler for uh, your users, but more likely you would want to keep these uh, custom styles in a sort of a custom class that you would be using. Maybe you would be creating a big button class, a small button class, and then you can encapsulate these CSS variables or CSS variable changes within that class and then you apply it to wherever you need. You can also use directives to attach it to your material components and you can convert them to your own custom components that way. Now this opens the doors for a lot of different customization possibilities. Now I've only covered some three properties here but you can see that there is a design token basically for every property out there barring very minor properties which actually nobody cares about. So this opens the door for a lot of granular customization in and the angular material components now and you can now accommodate your client requests, accommodate your project needs and you can actually customize the material components appearance according to your own needs. Now this also includes changing the color, so customizing the color. Now the color theming API is provided by material but in a recent project I discovered that I can also use my own custom theming using these CSS variables. Now I showed that initially, but I'm going to go into more detail in the next video for that. And I'm going to show you a real project as well that I did for a client in which I basically implemented a simple custom theme of two or three colors, which was much simpler than, you know, using the Angular Material Theming API. So I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please subscribe uh, and comment so that it will reach more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.